All right, traders, welcome to our chats and coffee with Ragi, our pre market show. Coffee, Ragi, and we're going to take a look at some charts together. Hope everyone's doing well. I think the mic is on this time. <laughs> Forgot to turn the mic on last. Actually, I, I think I did the first minute of the state of the market yesterday with the mic off because, you know, who doesn't like to sharpen up on their lip reading? All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. From Ithaca, New York. Very cool. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody. All right. So let's get to it, shall we? Uh, as always, I'm happy to answer whatever questions you guys might have. We'll take a look at the calendars today. We haven't really dove into those economic calendars as much over the last few um, sessions. So I, I definitely want to jump into that, take a look at the gap psychology, um, you know, and I'm going to share with you my plan for the week. Uh, what is, where is that? I do have the Monday notes. So I'm going to share those notes with you all because that's my, my game plan for this week. Uh, as always, if y'all have any questions, yes, that is, that is my text. Uh, you can text me through that number if you have any questions requests etc um, let me know and uh yeah gold sure let's 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 jump into that shall we you bet all right so gold now i'm on the trade station platform here um what indicators are on this layout right now i've been getting a lot of questions about the different indicators that i uh use so this is a daily time frame chart on the Thinkorswim platform with the grab candles, G-R-A-B stands for green, red, and blue. The 34 EMA wave, which is the 34 period exponential moving average. You can see there's three lines there, green, uh, green, blue, and red. 34 period on the high, the close, and the low. We have Darvis, automated Darvis levels, we call Darvis 2.0, propulsion dots, which automates what I consider to be a self-correcting smart moving average. And we have um, the V-score, a tool that I created many, many moons ago, 2008, in order to rebuild my investing portfolio by understanding standard deviation of volume weighted average price a better way to find out how, how call it the big money, size, whatever you want to call it, how that was moving. And then finally, the newest tool is a free tool. Most of these tools are free, by the way. The only tool on this chart that I think is paid for are any of the volume tools, like an anchored VWAP and my VScore. The tool at the bottom here is the history of this JT trend, which is a, uh, a look back at the way the 8, 13, 21, and 34 period exponential moving averages are, are moving in relation to each other. Gives me a much better look at the trend. All right, that's what's on this chart. Yesterday in the free video and also in the uh, closing video with my futures folks over at Simpler Futures, we talked about what's next for gold. And I mentioned that we broke 1850, which was this level of support, and that there's a high degree of probability that we could see the 200 EMA, which is sitting right there, uh, 1800, 1800 major psychological level. And that I'm waiting to see either a minor low or an inside day form before we start jumping back in. Now, those of you that know my options approach the way in which I manage my options is A, never be on top of your expiration date when you're entering it. I think a lot of people love to buy at the money, in the money, deep in the money options, but with very little time. And by the way, why do they do that? Because whether you know it or not, you're always budgeting your trades, especially when it comes to options. You've got a certain amount of capital that you can allocate to this trade idea, and then you will favor spending that capital, spending that budget on either being deeper in the money versus giving yourself time. I'd rather be at the money or slightly in the money with plenty of time. Nonetheless, though, I typically will put a percentage of the premium value 
as a stop on my options. So that's really it. Once I've crossed the validity of the trade, then I start looking at how much I've lost of the premium. So a loss doesn't turn into a big loss. I don't mind taking losses. My gosh, um, that's part of trading. I love when people say, well, I don't take losses. Um, <laughs> you will. So the idea is to make sure that when you do take a loss, it's on a big one. And in this case, you know, what I've now focused on is what's the new low that we're focusing on, probably 1820 to 1800. And the major psychological level, 1800 is in play. And the 200 EMA is in play. That's it, gang. That's it. Anything more than that is complicating something. The thing that I've got to mention before we even get deeper into the analysis of this, yes, I have a position in gold. No, I'm not happy about the direction of my call. It's for January of next year. And I have that percentage cutoff. When I look back on the collection of trades that I've had in gold, uh, this will be the third, fourth entry since the end of September. The, th the fourth entry since the end of September. This will be the first loss since then. And, you know, I guess it's kind of funny that I'm spending some time talking about losses because usually people in my position never talk about losses, which makes me crazy. Because when I was a new trader, following someone like myself back then that wasn't on the internet, but that was either in, in in-person seminars or courses, but no one would talk about losses. And I'm thinking it's part of the game. And yet I guess there's this delusion that folks who are professional traders, by the way, that word means nothing professional or full-time garbage words when it comes to trading. You're either profitable consistently or you're not. The amount of time you spend doing this uh, is irrelevant. And the only way a professional actually has any relevance legitimately in trading is if you work for uh, an entity that m makes you pay the professional exchange fees. I mean, the word professional means something completely different in that regard. So I don't throw those words around, professional, full-time. They're garbage words. Don't do it. You're either consistently profitable or you're not. So part of being consistently profitable is making sure that when you are losing, you pull the trade quickly and focus elsewhere. So that's that's what I want to venture over to here. Again, don't get, this is what I call rubbernecking the markets. We know, what, do you guys know what rubbernecking is? Rubbernecking, if you're driving on a highway, you're probably already familiar with it, is when everyone needs to stop and, and look at the accident that's occurred. I've always found that to be really interesting psychology. It's, it's irksome. It's lizard brain stuff. Um, this is not a market that you want to keep looking at. Everyone's going to be talking about it, right? But let this market simmer down, especially if you just took a small loss on it. My gosh, don't go right back after this market. It's told you you don't have an edge. Yellow waves, and we've talked quite a bit about market structure. Yellow waves don't offer you an edge. Why would I go right back into this, right? I've had excellent trades in gold, not for the last few months, gang, for the last couple of years. So that little move right there, I'll wait for another setup, but please. And I know that's not what the question is, but I guess the question that always has to precede the question about a symbol is, well, well, why? Why do we want to venture into it today or even this week? Um, I don't mind hanging on to the position that I have. I'm very likely going to cut it loose once it reaches that threshold. I might buy some February GLD calls so I could sit through whatever nonsense is going to happen if we break 1800 and not, um, you know, be in a time crunch, but also not be, um, you know, losing more than about that 25% that I like the risk of the premium that I've spent. But that's it. Um, I think we're probably going to hold the 200 EMA. You know, that's probably what people want to know. Where is it going to stop? I have, I have, a, I have a little clue in for everybody. We all predict. Nobody knows where the market's going to go. Nobody. But do I think there's a probability that we stop here? Sure. But I thought we would hold 1850, as did many, many other traders. The thing that I would love for you guys to focus on is something that I talked about in the free video yesterday, and that is if gold is moving lower is the dollar moving higher? And what could that mean for dollar shorts? Now, the best place to short the dollar is against the New Zealand dollar. So when I say dollar, I mean the US dollar, the greenback. 
uh, the best places to sell the US dollar, which I'm still very much interested in, is against the New Zealand dollar, the British pound, which you see right here, and and I still like the short against the uh, euro. So that means buy euro, sell US dollars. That's that's the way in which I would view this particular uh, trend in dollars, which I still think is very much to the downside. So when I see, oh, that's still so hot. <laughs> so when I see movement lower in gold, I'm expecting movement higher in the US dollar, and then I'm gonna look at New Zealand dollar, British pound and Euro, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So really all that was to, to emphasize two things. Know where your point of validity is. 1850 was my first point of validity. And if I'm gonna venture in again, which it's low on my list, by the way, but if I am gonna venture in again, it'll be GLD for that February expiration at the money, GLD calls, and um, I really wanna see 1800 on the GC futures hold. Otherwise, what's that next step lower? I wanna say it's something around 1758. So keep that in mind. The next step is a Lulu. Uh, and then what would that gold weakness mean to dollar and where can I sell US dollars? That's that, the bigger picture for me. But there's a lot of places that have far better structure right now than gold. Um, one of them happens to be copper. I like the, I, and when we're talking about metals, let's just talk about metals. I love the move we're seeing in copper. I'd love to take advantage of a pullback and get long. Now, I know a lot of folks don't play futures and, and don't like to play the futures contracts overnight. If you do, that's okay. Think about options on copper futures. There is no ETF alternative that has liquidity. So the next best thing you can do it's not perfect, but is look at Freeport MacMoran. FCX looks a lot like copper, doesn't it? It does tend to trend uh, and move in a similar manner to copper. So it's a proxy in the equities world for this futures contract, okay? And then, you know, while we're on the topic of futures, um, natural gas, we bought some UNG calls not that long ago, sat through a little bit of heat, were, was able to sit through that uh, percentage value threshold, still plenty of time to expiration. We're looking at finally this thing moving up in our direction. I'll take that. All right, so let's jump on over to the uh, economic calendar. And um, I just wanna mention that um, I have the, uh, so we do a, a sector secrets, um, mastery, which is my options and stock trading, my options on ETF trading. We have that today, live trading at 1.30 for those of you that are part of that, that mastery program. So super stoked for that. And we'll be talking about some of the moves we're seeing, tighten up that watch list that we've got, talk about risk parameters and entry parameters and things like that today. Um, what else? Okay, so economic calendar. Gang, we are in the window right now. So when people ask me about earnings, and that's that's a very popular question that I get via text and email, which is how do you trade earnings? Uh, anything that is remaining right now on the earnings calendar for 2020, I've already looked at, decided whether or not I want to play those. I'm either managing open positions, but that's pretty much done with. What I What I would prefer you all do now is not worry about Costco or Oracle. Um, yes, they're okay in terms of that very minimal two week to earnings window, but this is fine. These are these are all you know FedEx, Oracle, Costco, Broadcom, AutoZone, Salesforce. I mean, Deer coming up, Medtronic's today. A lot of times, people. How many of you ride motorcycles out there? So there's a horrible habit new riders tend to have, and that is we. Um, we ride our front wheel. And I know when I was a new motorcycle rider, I, you just kind of focus on your front wheel and what's just in front of it. And so what you really get better at, and when my husband and I went through motorcycle road racing school, um, they have you start looking through turns and looking looking up and, and further down the track. So the thing that you want to remember, and this was the same thing at drag racing school, same idea, the drag racing school analogy. Um, you're looking, uh, when you're lining up your, your 
bike and drag racing, quarter mile, right? I remember we were at um, the track up in Gainesville where they do the Gator Nationals. And there's some tall pines at the very, very end of the track, past the sand trap and everything. And our instructor, uh, George Bryce, who um, at the time was, actually still is, uh, team owner, he'd say, focus on the tips of the pines. We weren't riding the track at all. We were trying to keep a straight line. We focus on the pines. Now, why am I giving you guys this analogy? Hopefully it's translating. You've got to look down the track and looking down the track in earnings means two things. Not this year, gang. What's six weeks away and what has an uptrend? Follow those two criteria. If you want to start building your earnings watch list, and we'll be diving more into that in the Sector Secrets Live Trading. So if you're part of that mastery, those of you in the room, we're going to get into a lot more detail about that today. Now is the time you build that watch list. And those two criteria that I've just given you, those are key. That's the foundation. Six weeks out, uptrends or on the verge of an uptrend, on the verge of those trade flags, 8, 13, 21, 34, indicating that the market might be moving higher. So that's what you really want to do. So look down the track, look down the calendar. Don't focus on tomorrow. I mean, who cares about FedEx on the 17th? I don't, not really, not anymore. Um, if I wanted to play FedEx, it was starting six weeks out. And I did, and I have. Um, two weeks is the cutoff, right? Think about it this way and we'll, we'll move on from this topic. But this is, I probably had the most questions about earnings. And uh, once you start getting within two weeks, of the release, your implied volatility increases and the likelihood of vol crush, for those of you that know the terminology that you're overpaying based on the volatility component of your option, the likelihood of vol crush just, you know, increases incredibly. All right, do we have gap psychology today? Yep. So in the futures room here in about, oh, three minutes, um, we have gap psychology in the ES. We have gap psychology in the YM. We have gap psychology in the RTY. Not so shockingly, those are the three indices, the futures contracts, that have double green, that bullish organization. NASDAQ does not. NASDAQ does not, and there's no gap psychology here. So we'll be looking potentially at some gap fades on the open in those three. It's not that we just sell it on the open. We're looking for a very specific pattern. After the gap fade, gang, please do not keep a bearish bias on the market. We still want to look for the gap fade, driving prices lower, and then I'd like to look for a long position, uh, ideally off uh, clearing range lows, V-score lows, uh, volatility lows, things of that nature. So that's what I'll be doing in the in the futures room here in in just a in just a bit. So that's the gap psychology. Those three indices. That means also the sectors that are heavily weighted within those indices are where you want to keep your eyes on, your IYTs, your XLFs, your XLEs, your XLV. XLV has been hammered as of late. Let's see what happens with XLV. Um, XLF has been the popular kid in class. Look at that thing. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye on those stocks that track with those indices and the sectors that track with those indices. In other words, what's the weighting within them? Okay, so again, fades are a temporary setup. Maybe the first 30 to 60 minutes of the day may be uh, over that fading psychology, but it's usually for me a very short-term trade that hopefully drives me down to the bottom of the range where I can do what I really would prefer being, which is not short the Russell or the Dow or the S&P. Now, we don't short it on the open. We wait for a range to develop and then we look for the breach of that range to the downside. But then what I want is, is a buy. And also keep in mind, gang, and I didn't get around to the notes with you all, but uh, let me show you here real quick. And then I've got to get over to the futures room. Do not lose your shirt this week. We're looking for gap psychology. Okay. We're looking for gap psychology, which we do have. Um, and then, you know, look at those transitions. XLF, these are some of my favorite stocks in XLF right now. But please remember, this is a week that really ends this week. Uh, tomorrow, folks are going to phone it in. Friday, they're going to be still on their trip to fan, on their post-Turkey trip to fan highs um, or lows, however you want to look at that. 
feeling post-tryptophan. Uh, so keep that in mind. Today's really the last day of the week as far as I'm concerned. But it gives us a tremendous opportunity to be watch list building, fine-tuning that watch list, see what kind of uh, developments we've seen in the trend, which is huge because NASDAQ is still the laggard gang. NASDAQ is still very much the laggard. So think about the sectors that are not participating in this. Tech really isn't participating in the current strength. There's other uh, sectors that are doing far better. Think financials. Uh, let's keep an eye on staples. Let's keep an eye on discretionary uh, energies, transports, industrials. Let's keep an eye on those areas. All right, so um, with all that being said, um, I hope that was helpful. A lot of you have been texting and emailing me about earnings. I hope that helps. And um, is the trend history tool at the Rogi Lab site? No, Robert, it's in the room drives for options and the sector secret mastery and futures. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the different room drives. Okay. All right, gang, that is it. I will see you all tomorrow, okay? Thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you all in the futures room or the options room or wherever you're heading to next. And uh, if not, I'll catch you at 9 a.m. All right, gang, be good to each other.